Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw the Millennium Falcon, one of the most iconic uh, rocket ships in all of sci-fi history. I think everyone can agree with that. I want to begin by pointing out that this is not white paper, it's kind of a brown paper. Here's the white paper to show you by comparison. That's going to help me to do some uh, lighting effects later on by way of my beloved white gouache. I've got a very wide rectangle here to show people just the size that I'm working at. I'll quickly tell you it's about nine and a quarter inches left to right. That works out to around 23 and a half centimeters. Uh, it is about, what is it, nine centimeters from top to bottom, roundabout, and that is three and a half inches, basically just for people who want to make sure they're working at the same size. Now what I'm going to do is put down a kind of a grid uh, line system a little bit in perspective so that we can begin uh, building the structure of the Millennium Falcon. So the way we're going to do it is have the big uh, saucer-like part of the ship in the back here and then the more triangular kind of areas out here in front. And that's why I've put these two lines here. This is going to give us the sort of central uh, rectangular uh, dividing line of the ship. And then I've put a few more going across here. All of this kind of giving us a very loose perspective. Now it's not strictly a two-point perspective in the sense of having, you know, points that I'm uh, making the ruler uh, respond to, but it's sort of more generally imagining very, very distant points and these all going off uh, in a similar direction. Well, I guess the first thing to do right now uh, is to begin drawing, as I said, this sort of saucer-like base uh, that uh, the rest of the ship is built off of. So you can see I've got a very wide, stretched out kind of an oval here, just because of the angle that we're viewing the ship from. And uh, once you've got that in place, you're going to want to start to put in a few uh, guidelines for the sort of, I'm going to call it the triangular horseshoe. <laughs> How do you like that? The triangular horseshoe uh, at the front of the ship. So you can see how those initial uh, guidelines helped for getting these uh, structures in the right place. And then basically, once you've got those, uh, you know, figured out the width here at the, at the tip, then you just have the line head back towards the uh, oval and you've basically got them where you need them to be. Now this is the upper surface. I'm going to build some lines down uh, from each one of these like this so as to uh, make it look three-dimensional. All right, so we've got this real basic structure of the ship in place, and sadly it starts to get more and more complex from here on out. You know, the Millennium Falcon is a sort of study in complexity, and my challenge here uh, in terms of teaching it is to break it down into its very most basic shape. So I think the next thing we need to do is to get this uh, sort of um, circular gun turret type of area in place. And maybe once I've got that in there, I'm also going to put in a little bit of a slanting center structural uh, rectangle. Tangle, and then I'll be back to sort of introduce the next segment. All right, so you can see how small this uh, central gun turret oval is compared to the rest of um, the sphere. It's not a sphere. <laughs> that is not a sphere. Saucer, I guess. Saucer-shaped structure. And uh, here we have a, a extended kind of rectangular shape that is at a little bit of an angle. That's why you can see like this line here, I see this as horizontal. Uh, this one's sort of slanting down just a bit. And I guess what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and erase this because it's, um, uh, you know, not going to be seen in the final drawing. In fact, I'm going to erase a little of this as well. How do you like that? I'm just erasing everything. <laughs> out of my way lines and I'll uh, just I'll go real time on this just for a second to show you how this uh, rectangle sort of slants down and connects um, down here and then comes back to uh, meet the the oval it's meeting the oval hello there oval <laughs> nice to meet you now that is a dad joke even I have to admit that is a dad joke <laughs> That is one of the worst jokes I've ever done in any one of my videos. But we must press onward in spite of the terrible jokes. Uh, and then this line here, curving up here, begins to give you some sense of the structure of this uh, sort of compressed saucer-like shape. And uh, yeah, maybe that's enough for that. You can get the sense of how that's all going to fit together. There's going to be more details down here. There always are. But let's go ahead and build. Um, there's these two sort of triangle shapes that come off on both sides. It's quite symmetrical in this one area here. All 
Okay, so hopefully you can see these two structures here. They are uh, roughly rectangular, although both of the sides sort of slant down just a little bit um, in a way that is uh, very hard for me to describe. <laughs> Pyramid-like structures, in any case, if you can visualize that. And one thing I would say to notice is that these lines here, here, I'll grab the ruler. These lines here need to be um, roughly parallel uh, to this line. In fact, a lot of these lines, I'm going to come back later on and, uh, with the ruler, sort of tidy them up, up a bit, make sure that they all um, relate properly. Uh, you know, like all of these sort of forward-facing uh, lines are all going forward at the same angle. Uh, but, for now, I think we are ready to move on to a couple of the other things. Well, th at this point it starts to become a little asymmetrical, which is what makes the design interesting to me. Uh, and let's just go ahead and put in this cockpit that is way over here on the left side, and uh, really something that makes the uh, whole design much more distinctive. Alright, so it's starting to take shape here. I'm going to go ahead and erase the um, saucer line. And uh, I, as I said, it's sort of interesting how um, asymmetrical this is in terms of uh, shifting off the uh, cockpit way over to one side of the ship. I certainly had never seen that done before uh, the first Star Wars came out. We always had these sort of, you know, pretty symmetrical looking rocket ships. Correct me if I'm wrong, those of you who know your sci-fi better than I do. Um, but uh, I guess what I can do right here is just quickly dash in an actual extra uh, structural line to give you some sense of, you know, it almost looks like from uh, one of the American rocket ships, you know, that <laughs> went to the moon, this one little section here. Um, in any case, there are more details uh, in terms of the windows and so forth, but I want to get in at least a couple more things. Well, there's this big sort of looks like a radar dish here. I'm going to get that into place, and then I also want to get these round, um, you know, this thing starts off rectangular, but is sort of capped off with these uh, round structures. So I'll get both of those things in place right now. So hopefully you can see how this all fits together. We've got this uh, oval shape here that, as I said, kind of caps off the end of this structure. And uh, the, I extended that one line all the way down here to the edge of the um, upper uh, side of the, the saucer. I guess I'll just keep using <laughs> that phrase to describe that. And uh, over here you see I drew the, um, uh, the, the radar-like dish over here. Interestingly, around the same uh, size, maybe a tiny bit smaller, uh, and in all the photo reference that I looked at, it was always facing forward. Uh, let me know, folks, if that's capable of pivoting to one side or the other. Um, I think it's time to do just a few more last final guidelines, then we can knock it off with all this time lapse and do some real-time drawing. Uh, there are actually a number of what look like just holes <laughs> in the upper surface of the Millennium Falcon. There's like five of them here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get those in place, and uh, I suppose the last thing after that will be the cockpit. But let's go ahead and get those holes in, uh, into the various surfaces. So this is something I'd never really noticed about the Millennium Falcon's design, these holes. I don't know, are they like air intake <laughs> uh, valves or something? I have no idea, but there are one, two, three, four right here in the front. And they seem to line up uh, uh, sort of diagonally with this outer edge. And over here, this one more of a hexagon. Hexagonal. <laughs> design for this one. But again, they seem open as if, you know, I sort of imagine there used to be coverings, but they popped off, or <laughs> maybe Han Solo traded them away at some point. Who knows? Uh, but uh, it is an important part of the design if you want your drawing to be accurate. There are, of course, many more tiny details yet to come. Um, but let's do the last thing that I'm going to just zip in here with uh, the aid of old man time-lapse. Old Jedi <laughs> time-lapse. Uh, the, um, uh, the windows of the cockpit. And then we can get on with some real-time drawing.
So there's the lines of the cockpit. Quite a complex little design uh, they came up with there. And then I thought at the same time I'd go ahead and get these four little, they're like reverse fins almost across the uh, back. And maybe now we can finally start getting into some of the real-time drawing. What I'm going to do is just uh, refocus the camera, zoom in on the left side, and maybe we'll just work our way across left to right, little by little, uh, refining the details, uh, sort of finishing off all those extra lines. Okay, so I'm going to begin by sort of uh, adding a bit more structure to the edge of this um, cap, <laughs> circular cap that uh, uh, is found at, at uh, either side of this central structure. Uh, you're going to hear me just saying words like central structure. I don't know <laughs> the words for these various parts of the Millennium Falcon. I'm sure there are uh, experts out there who have memorized the blueprints. And that's the thing with doing a drawing of the Millennium Falcon is you have to be aware that, you know, fans really know this ship. And so um, it may be tempting to start fudging the details and say, yeah, well, close enough. And, um, you know, you're welcome to do that. But I'm trying my best not to just start uh, winging it and throwing in anything I feel like. Um, that being said, you when you get down to these really crazy little details, you almost have no choice but to sort of guess at what they all are and what they're supposed to do. Um, so you can see I've put in sort of an interior edge, uh, sort of an inset area. Almost does sort of look like a hubcap a little bit. And uh, then I'm going to put a few lines across the uh, outside edge here to define the surface. You'll see me doing that a lot throughout this video, adding things that sort of help us see uh, the shape. For example, if you go across this whole surface and start echoing that line, it really helps us to understand how that structure is uh, built. And then here, of course, you have those central lines that I'd put down at the beginning to help you know what, you know, what to go parallel with there. Unfortunately, back in this area of the, what I keep calling the saucer, um, these lines are not so helpful because it is, it's this curved surface. In fact, let's start doing that a little here. Um, I'm going to be kind of guessing at how these, uh, lines, these sort of concentric circles would begin heading back. And of course this whole area back here is turned away from us so much you're barely going to see uh, any of those details. Actually it's nice to, to not have to deal because there's just crazy details in the back of the ship. And Happily I can just sort of uh, hint at those and not have to draw them too much. But um, yeah, having some sense, like here you can see this curving surface that helps us uh, see that it is in fact a kind of a a saucer-like shape. This would extend all the way across, you know. And so let's just go ahead and we'll come over here, uh, make sure it's still within the frame of the camera. And um, well, here I'll put in a, a lower line here that defines this upper turret, the circular base of where the gun turret goes. And once you've got that double extra line in there, then you can begin sort of making lines that come across like so. And uh, you know, this is the this is the tunnel or, or uh, corridor almost that leads from the cockpit back into the ship. That also is giving you a sort of a line that you want to follow along as you begin to, you know, define the upper surface of the uh, the saucer. I don't know if Millennium Falcon people like to use the term saucer when describing the ship, but I've already used it about 15 times in this video alone. Um, and yeah, so you can see that, again, there probably are sort of defined uh, details here where things ought to be. One thing I noticed is that the, later on maybe I can add in color a couple of stripes here, red colored stripes I noticed in almost all of the different photos that I studied. There seem to be um, what look like pipes almost, you know, I don't know if you would imagine them to be sort of electrical piping, but uh, on the exterior of the ship, you know, one of the funny lines in Star Wars is when Luke looks at the thing and says, that piece of junk, you know, and then, uh, you know, Ray in the new film also refers to it as a piece of junk. And, you know, presumably it's all this exterior piping and so forth that adds to the feeling of this by the standards of the Star Wars universe, is a sort of very junky looking ship. Uh, but that's what makes it so awesome. Uh, there is a sort of a section up here on the uh, roof of the cockpit that's filled with uh, details and sort of, uh, you imagine, fuselage or 
I don't know what any of these words mean. <laughs> Lots of detailed stuff uh, up here at the top. But otherwise, over here, I would just be adding more of these uh, sort of surface lines. You know, I think it becomes crucial to keep adding. Wherever you see a surface and you understand the structure, you can help convey that by adding uh, lines that, you know, follow along. Like, I do believe it would make sense for this uh, over here to sort of follow in parallel. I guess I can try that out. Why not? See if that helps to uh, make it more believable. I mean, a lot of times you really do have to con constantly keep checking yourself and saying, well, am I obeying the rules of my own perspective that I've uh, put in place? I think it would be helpful for these lines that curve, you know, these con concentric circles to follow through, right, over here. So you've got to have those coming all the way across and then presumably also uh, continuing over here. So a lot of, you know, I was hoping that this video could be more than just how to draw the Millennium Falcon and a little bit about how to how to use perspective, a basic perspective system to construct some sort of um, vehicle, a structure, building. Uh, and, you know, this could even expand beyond sci-fi to medieval structures or whatever. Just the idea that you don't just go in and start drawing walls and roofs and so forth. You, you, you have a structure in place, as I put with these uh, lines, that give you some sense of the um, horizontal... Uh, and even vertical, like right here, these would be the vertical line surfaces. So that when you begin to draw your vehicle or a castle or whatever it is, you're not just uh, trying to make it up as you go. You have, have at least some footing in reality, some structural uh, system of perspective in place. And uh, as I said, that's sort of an added layer to this video. Um, maybe I can expand further on that, on this idea of... Um, you know, using perspective to construct buildings or vehicles or whatever. Um, this um, radar dish, satellite dish, do they get satellite, satellite radio? Uh, back here, um, I had trouble sort of seeing, but it does seem to have a round base and then uh, some semi-hidden structure that's uh, holding that up. But one thing I did notice was that the interior of the uh, radar dish has lots and lots of these uh, curved structural lines. Don't know if I'm doing this so well, but sort of ridges almost within the... Uh, so rather than leaving that blank, if you want to go for that authentic Millennium Falcon look, you've got to get a bunch of these red ridges coming out. Now, one area that is uh, sort of a maze of detail is this central area here, and maybe this is as good a time as any for me to start pulling out the ruler and showing how I intend to um, straighten these lines out. But this this central... Um, uh, oh my, i got to be careful, actually, because I'm starting to go off of the uh, video frame. Hang on, I'm going to refocus so that I don't uh, miss too much uh, uh, detail by way of <laughs> drawing way over here where you can't see. All right, well, there you see. Sorry, some of that did go off the edge of the video frame, but uh, hopefully not too hard to uh, work that out. And um, what I was going to do then was to begin working out some of the details that go across the, the top of the central rectangular structure. Lots of what I have been describing is sort of piping this exterior um, tubes, you know, that you see going all across here. And so I noticed there was one that came out here and then sort of a second uh, line somewhere around here. And then really it does become, you know, it tests your patience as an artist as to how uh, strict you want to get on this stuff. Because there are so many crazy little details. But I saw one that had a lot of, um, one photo that had some horizontal piping up here that sort of defined that section. Um, I suppose now is as good a time as any to get the um, gun, the actual gun turret in place. It's not in the dead center, interestingly. It seems to be a little to the forward part of, the, of that circle. 
And then uh, I'm going to erase away just a little to make space for this, but there's sort of four, those of you who've seen Star Wars, you can probably remember, I think the, every once in a while they would show a close-up of this gun firing, you know, as they were shooting at TIE fighters or whatever. Um, there's not just one gun coming out of here, there's like four of them. And they are, um, you know, two rows of two, basically. I tried to make this drawing uh, as uh, on the page as large as possible so as to accommodate all these details. But even so, it's hard to, to fit it all in there. But um, there is sort of a round um, concave area uh, that holds the gun and then behind that some surface detail that is actually sort of um, like the spokes of a bike almost coming out from there, I believe. And um, let's go ahead and uh, move on down here to uh, drawing a little more of this detail that's across the front. This is another area where, um, you know, since this is slanting down, these lines are, are sort of following a rules of their own in terms of the surface, but this the, these horizontal lines are helping us determine uh, where any structural lines would go that way. And so, you know, making sure that all those lines remain parallel uh, is uh, a great way of uh, making that structure seem more solid. Here we've got a sort of um, beveled edge or a slightly um, diagonal edge. So all these lines be, have to be tilted a bit. It is a challenge, you know, to even to to teach something like this because you just go from detail to detail and it, <laughs> it could be endless, you know. I think at a certain point you have to just throw your hands up and say, you know what, I'm going to just, um, I'll do my best. But if a Millennium Falcon expert comes along and points out discrepancies in my drawing, then so be it. I can't be all things for all people, man. I'm just doing my best here. Uh, but yeah, it, it is true that with the Millennium Falcon, the people who designed it, uh, the movie uh, people, have provided such detailed information about it that you can, you know, it holds up to that level of scrutiny of someone who wants to build a model or whatever. There is happily in this case a lot of uh, information out there, and they, they've thought it through, and it seems so real, you know. Oh, there's a couple of things up here in the front I wanted to mention. They almost look like clasps. Who knows what purpose they actually serve, but they're over here near these uh, holes. I'll go ahead and shade this in and make them a little more hole-like. But there's a, a section up here, sort of a forward-facing structure that seems to clasp down on a secondary structure. Both of these very much facing forward. And then over here you'll have the exact same thing symmetrically reproduced. And let me know if you, you know, in doing a video like this, let me know if you like seeing so much of this done real time. I'm doing my best, and a lot of people really hate when I uh, kick into time lapse um, for huge parts of the video. And there certainly will be time lapse later on when we get to the coloring, but I thought I could at least do this part somewhat real time. Uh, over here, this is sort of interesting because when we put this structure in to begin with, this almost cuts away at the triangular structure in the front of the ship, causing this to curve back and create a gap. And I'm just going to go ahead and darken this in just to help you see what happens there. And uh, yeah, I said I was going to kind of show how this works. Let me see if I can. This, uh, this also is sort of cut back a little bit at least according to one of the photos I looked at. And this whole area here is like an open mouth in a way, like a big mechanical open mouth. This being the top, you know, imagine this is like the upper lip and this down here is the lower lip. So that, uh, yeah, I don't want to assume I know what all this stuff is for, but that does, it's almost as if there's an opening for air or whatever <laughs> to go in. So uh, we get our, to the front of the ship here and this, I think, thankfully, is where you have a lot of structural flat uh, shapes that allow you to kind of go in and know exactly where the lines go, 
right? When you get into that um, saucer-like area, it can get kind of, kind of confusing as to where you would add extra lines. Here, it's all quite, um, you know, composed of flat surfaces. So I can kind of come in here, and as long as these lines remain parallel, I can kind of just start to dash in extra uh, lines. Now, of course, the the real um, forward-facing lines should all go along that center structure that we had done before. Of course, what makes it confusing is that the people who did the design might have some of the pipes follow along the edge here instead of uh, going front to back uh, as before. So, yeah, unfortunately, there are no easy shortcuts when it comes to the Millennium Falcon. But this, this sort of um, vertical facing area here, for example, uh, this is relatively straightforward. All these you can sort of, I'm just dashing it in real quickly, these lines that, that establish that surface. And then uh, again, yeah, you can see me relying on the ruler to start getting in some of these really long pipe-like structures. I would say at this stage, because I've spent so much time trying to do it real time, that uh, maybe I should uh, do at least parts of the final detailing uh, in time lapse. And that way we can come back and maybe uh, get into the coloring, which I think is going to make this a much more interesting looking uh, illustration in the end. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll finally uh, give up on the <laughs> real time <laughs> drawing and uh, uh, finish up some of the details. I'll, put, I'll refocus the camera at least so you can see all the different stuff that I'm drawing at that point. And then we'll come back and maybe, um, you know, I'll probably, yeah, I'll come back and I'll do the final line work and then we'll get into the coloring. All right, so sorry I had to speed through all that, and sorry that I'm about to speed through even more, because it's time to do the final line work, and uh, I really don't think there's any um, need to do all of that real time. I did want to point out, though, that uh, I've chosen to use a black Prisma color uh, to do the final line work, which is going to allow me to sort of uh, make darker lines in some places and then lighter lines in others. But uh, you may prefer to use uh, some kind of a pen, permanent ink pen, for uh, doing your final line work. In any case, let's go ahead and do this all in time lapse. Uh, you'll see me finish off all the lines, and then we'll be back with my beloved white gouache to do some of these uh, uh, nifty little lighting effects. Alright, so I've got all of the final line work done. Well, not all of it. I probably will have to come back and <laughs> tighten things up yet further. But I wanted to bring out my beloved white gouache, which is just an opaque white paint you can find at uh, art supply stores, craft stores. And I'm going to begin applying it uh, to create some lighting effects. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're using kind of a brown uh, colored paper, and that's going to allow me to Begin adding um, little highlights here and there that uh, will hopefully create the effect of light. Uh, harsh outer space uh, light hitting the rocket ship. And I thought that this would be a particularly good um, you know, video tutorial for using uh, gouache just because of that. Uh, that sort of harsh outer space light. And when you see photos of the you know, models or even, I suppose, CGI-generated ones from later times. They are generally lit with this, um, you know, very high contrast, contrasty uh, light, which is, I, I suppose, um, realistic from, based on, uh, you know, rocket ships in outer space. You don't have any atmosphere, right? So it, uh, the light does tend to be uh, fairly harsh. But hopefully you're starting to already get a little bit of an effect here. And um, I wasn't sure if I would try to do this all with uh, white gouache. Oh, you know, one thing I wanted to point out, because some people have tried buying white gouache, and I don't know, uh, uh, they don't uh, necessarily understand without me saying it clearly, that this needs to be mixed with water. You can't... Um, you know, if you try to take it straight out of the tube and apply it to the page, it's going to be super, super thick and pasty. Uh, you do need to, it's just like any watercolor, you need to mix it with a little bit of water to uh, get it to the consistency you need. 
And um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll uh, probably have to uh, go ahead and kick this part into time lapse as well. Uh, it is a super, super detailed uh, subject matter, the, the Millennium Falcon, but um, I thought it would be fun to revisit my youth and, of course, to commemorate The uh, Force Awakens. I hope you've all uh, had a chance to go out and see it. I loved it. I thought it was great, especially uh, the first half. I thought really uh, recaptured some of that magic in terms of the acting and uh, just the warmth, the humor, right? Jokes that were funny. <laughs> that is something I'm sorry, but something that seems to have been missing from the Star Wars franchise for a while, but uh, just my opinion there. Uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into uh, time lapse to uh, finish off all of this white gouache, and then we'll be back with a few final words. Well, I think we may just have to call this the Great White Gouache Fest of 2015. I spent more time applying white gouache to this uh, illustration than in any other video I've done, probably about an hour, all told. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had to make the focus of this video about how to draw the Millennium Falcon. If you'd like a separate video that's more about the white gouache uh, illustration process, just let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to do a separate video that's all about that. I did want to point out that I used a little bit of gray marker here for some of the mid-tones. Felt like that was missing. And then, of course, uh, a little bit of red colored pencil for these uh, little, uh, you know, design aspects of the Millennium Falcon. But let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Miki Falls or Brody's Ghost, my two graphic novel series, as well as The Realism Challenge, my book about hyper-realism illustration techniques. And then, of course, there's always Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, my books about how to draw in a manga style. I'm always super, super appreciative appreciative of anyone who supports me by getting any of those books. But let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.